100 years ago, one of the most significant treaties in modern history was signed. The Treaty of Versailles may have ended the First World War, but it pushed the world even closer to the Second. World War I ended with the famous signing of the Armistice at Compagnie on November 11th, 1918. But the technicalities were far from over. The Paris Peace Conference saw the major Allied powers discuss what was to become of the defeated Central Powers. Specifically, the conference centered around the debates between the Big Four, David Lloyd George of Great Britain, George Clemenceau of France, Woodrow Wilson of America, and Vittorio Emmanuel Orlando of Italy. France wanted harsh reparations from the Germans, as they had serious damage to land and major losses of life. The Americans represented the polar opposite and wanted a more productive peace. Britain represented the middle ground of these two. These conferences ultimately laid out the framework for the treaties. The Treaty of Versailles only dealt with Germany, as each central power had to sign an individual treaty, with Austria and Hungary each signing separately. Former German territory was ceded, such as Schleswig-Holstein to Denmark, Alsace-Lorraine to France, and large portions of eastern Germany to Poland, a new country created by the treaty. All production in the Tsar was to be given to France. Also, all German colonies were made into mandates to the new League of Nations. The League of Nations was Wilson's brainchild, although America, ironically, was the only major power not to get involved in it. The League was designed to ensure peace, although it had virtually no power other than drawing a country into war without its own consent. But that is a topic for a later video. The demilitarization of Germany was another major part of the treaty. The army was limited to a max of 100,000 men. Military schools had not only restricted capacities, but also rules stating that they had to keep men in there for a longer amount of time so that Germany couldn't cycle through large amounts of trained men. The navy was also severely limited on ships, and all submarines were banned. Militarization was strictly prohibited in the Rhineland. Germany was forced to pay about 20 billion marks, which is approximately 5 billion US dollars of the time, in reparations to the Allies. The German response to the treaty is widely known to be extremely negative. Hitler infamously used the harsh restrictions put in place by the Treaty of Versailles to rally the German people. Italy was also upset as they failed to complete their main war goal, to capture Dalmatia from Austria-Hungary. The outrage allowed M Mussolini to come into power a few years later. Britain and France were both understandably pleased with the outcome. Although the treaty matched Wilson's goals, many Americans refused to ratify it, specifically because of the League of Nations. America and Germany signed a separate peace a few years later. Although the Treaty of Versailles was designed to ensure peace, it had the opposite effect. The harsh restrictions and reparations it imposed on Germany and its failure to recognize Italian desires led to the rise of the dictators who would soon bring Europe into another world war. Nonetheless, Europe became content with its temporary peace, ignoring the horrors that were just around the corner. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm Matthew, and I hope I'll see you next time. Goodbye, goodbye, where's the dear baby dear from your eye? Though it's hard to part, I know, I know, I'll be sick of the death to go. Don't cry, don't cry, there's a silver lining in the sky. Bonsoir, old sing, cheerio, chin, chin, na, boo, toogaloo.